Hey guys, welcome to another product showcase video. Uh, today we're having kind of an extreme edition of the uh, product showcase. We're going to be looking at the Silver Arrow CPU cooler by Thermalrite. Okay, first off, it, it comes in a pretty big box. There's not a lot of information on the box. On the uh, side of it, it tells you what CPU coolers it supports. We can get this turned right here. Um, this does work with the socket 1366, 1156, 775, AM2, and AM3 processors. Um, we're going to open this up and to see what all accessories come with it. Okay, well first off, let me say they do give you everything you could possibly need. A uh, wonderful accessory package for a CPU cooler. Um, comes with uh, various instructions explaining to you how to uh, mount it on the different systems, like your AM2, AM3. This I assume would be your uh, Intel mounting. And also the exploded view here of the assembly package, the different things that uh, come with the package itself. As you can see, it's quite a bit of stuff they give you. Um, they give you a case sticker that you could either uh, add onto your case itself or somewhere on your desk if you wish. This would be your uh, Intel mounting bracket for your uh, 775, uh, 1156, and 1366. This is your AM the uh, AM2, AM3 solution with the uh, backing plate and spring mounts for it. Comes with a couple of uh, pads here for a uh, rubber anti-vibration mount for your fans onto the cooler itself. They include a small wrench for uh, tightening the cooler down. They give you a tube of their CF3 thermal paste this is your main hold down that will hold the CPU cooler down to whichever mounting bracket you use, whether AMD or uh, Intel. They give you four spring clips to mount the fans onto the cooler itself. And the cooler comes equipped with two 140 millimeter TY series ultra low noise fans. If you'll notice the mounting holes are actually 120 millimeter but because of the oblong shape they're able to put a 140 millimeter fan onto here using 120 millimeter mounting holes and they do include two of these with it so let me set this stuff aside and we'll have a little closer look at the cooler okay the first thing you're going to notice is this is a good size cooler it's a twin tower um, as you can see it uses good size heat pipes these are eight millimeter heat pipes. These are a uh, nickel plated copper uh, base on them for uh, heat dispersion. Let's uh, look at some of the specs on this before we get too far ahead of ourselves here. The dimensions on it are length is 147 millimeters, width is 123 millimeters, and height is 160 millimeters. Uh, weight on it without the fans, just the cooler itself, is 825 grams. The heat pipes are 8 millimeter sinistered heat pipes, and there are four of them, as you can see. Uh, the cooler base material is C1100 pure copper with nickel plating. Uh, fan compatibilities for it are 120 millimeter by 25 millimeter, 140 millimeter by 25 millimeter or 120 millimeter by 38 millimeter. Uh, fan dimensions themselves are length 160, width 25 millimeters, and height 140 millimeters. Fan speeds are 500 to 1300 RPMs. Fan airflow is 28 to 73.6 CFM. And fan noise level is 17 decibels to 21 decibels. Okay, well now that we have all the specs out of the way, we can have a closer look at the cooler itself. The uh, spring mounts on the side for them. As you can see, um, this could be set up for a triple fan 
little setup. Let me grab my fans here. It gives you a lot of options as to how you want to install them, whether you're going to do a push-pull, whether you want to mount one, you know, in the center and on the end, or vice versa. Or you could put, put uh, three fans on it if you wish and uh, add a third one here. Uh, might be a nice setup if you wanted to, uh, say, put LED fans or something on if you want to add some extra light, extra color to your uh, case itself. But you'd be hard-pressed to probably find fans that are going to be as good as the uh, thermal right ones that they do include with it. So you, if you do decide to replace fans, make sure that you look at the CFM and look at the decibels and stuff of the fans you're going to replace it with to make sure that they're uh, up to par with what comes on the cooler. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to uh, overclocking with air, I believe this to be the best cooler on the market right now. Uh, if anybody can think of one that could beat this cooler, I would sure like them to post a comment, what have you. Um, benchmarks I've read, uh, different specs I've looked at on them. Um, there's really not much out there that can touch this. Um, it's really in stiff competition with the uh, Noctua NHD14 cooler, which as you all know is very top of the line uh, as far as air cooling, uh, overclocking with air. But even on all the benchmarks I've seen on that, this beats it slightly by temperature. It's about one degree cooler on idle and load than the uh, Noctua solution is. Um, but with these fans, it beats it all over the place with the uh, decibels. It's a very quiet cooler compared to the uh, Noctua solution. I love the uh, nickel plating of it. It has a beautiful design. Let's uh, have a look at the backing here peel this back so you can get an idea of just how beautifully finished this is. I'm not sure how the uh, reflection is going to show up there, but you can kind of get an idea. Let me see if I can get the camera in here so you can uh, kind of see just how nice that is. It's a beautiful reflection, beautifully machined. There's not going to be any high spots, no need to have to lap this before you install it. Uh, it's going to be ready to go right out of the box. It does have a fair amount of weight, like we had mentioned, the 825 grams without the fans. By the time you add the fans, it's uh, definitely going to add a little more weight because these are uh, a very high quality fan. They have a little weight to them too, so you definitely have to make sure that your case can support the height width of this cooler and also uh, have the proper backing plate installed to uh, take the weight of it. Another nice thing I like about this cooler versus some of the other ones on the market, if we flip it over here, you can kind of see how they did their heat pipe design, how they kind of kept it tucked in, which is really nice because as we've seen with other big coolers, a lot of times they can interfere with your memory chips. And uh, you may be in a situation where you can't replace a memory chip or, you know, uh, you can't access a slot for your memory once the cooler is installed because it blocks it. So I like the way that they have tucked the uh, heat pipes kind of n nicely inside here. They're not extending out farther into the uh, cooling fins themselves. So that it's uh, really going to give you more room depending on which direction you mount it, blowing upwards or toward the back. Um, to be able to access your memory chips and to get at maybe your Northbridge cooler or uh, MOSFET coolers maybe in the way. So it's going to give you the option to mount this on more motherboards than uh, some of the other solutions out there where you have to be very careful what board you're trying to put them onto. But uh, anyway, we're going to do some benchmarking on this one. I I'm just kind of dying to see how this performs. So I'm going to uh, pull the computer out here and take the cooler off of it. We'll get this all mounted up. We'll look at some uh, stock temperatures and then what the uh, temperatures are with this uh, Silver Arrow. Okay, we're getting it uh, set up here for some benchmark tests. Uh, for this test, we're using the Q9300. Um, as you can see, it's been lapped, so uh, we shouldn't have any problems with uh, flatness, so we know that the uh, heat sink's going to make uh, good contact with it. And for the first test, we're going to uh, just use the stock Intel cooler 
that you get with your uh, quad cores, dual cores. Uh, generally, this is what a majority of people are going to at least start with when they build their machine. So we're going to compare the temperatures from that to uh, what we can do with the uh, Silver Arrow. And to make the test as fair as possible, I'm also going to use the uh, same CF3 compound that uh, Thermalrite includes with the cooler. There should be enough compound here to uh, mount a cooler twice. So I'll use it with the uh, stock cooler as well as our Silver Arrow cooler so that we know that the thermal paste isn't making any uh, sort of temperature difference. Okay, because this is such a uh, extreme overclocking cooler, we're not going to even uh, bother taking some readings at stock speeds. Uh, we're going to go right to the uh, 3.25 overclock on this one and look at the temperatures. Uh, this is with the stock Intel cooler. Uh, as you can see, these are just idle temperatures. We got 43, 43, 41, and 46 on the cores. And just to confirm that uh, this is an Intel Core 2 Quad 9300 uh, running at 1.28 volts. We're using a 433.3 bus speed and a rated front side bus of 1733. So now what we're going to do is uh, run Prime 95 for a few minutes and see what the temperatures go up to. Okay, we've been running uh, Prime 95 for a little bit, 100% uh, on all four cores. See if we can uh, zoom in on this. Uh, so far we're seeing 60, 60, 63, and 65 for max temperatures on the cores. Uh, currently they're running 60, uh, very high 50s to uh, low 60s, mid, up to mid 60s. So we're going to shut this down and switch over to the Silver Arrow and see what the temperatures do with that. Okay, we're just getting the cooler prep to install. As you can see, I installed the uh, 3M anti-vibration pads that they uh, include with it. That is optional. Um, you can choose to not use them, but it is a nice touch and it is going to keep things quiet. And as you can see, it doesn't really restrict airflow through the fins, so it's going to still be nice and cool and uh, give you some uh, silence with the anti-vibrations on there. We are installing the Intel mounts for it, and I just want to show you the plate here. As you can see, the uh, different holes in the plate here are for your different Intels. Your inside one here would be your 775 and then your 1156 and then 1366 so it's very easy to adapt from uh, one system to another so I just wanted to show a couple of them things before we move on with the installation here okay as you can see we now have the thermal right uh, silver arrow installed um, just looking at some uh, idle temperatures right now looks like we're seeing anywhere from 37 to about 41 on the cores so we're going to start Prime 95 and uh, see how hot it gets with this cooler. Okay, we've been running Prime 95 for a while here at 100% uh, on all cores. Uh, as you can see, our temperatures are in the 40s. Uh, maximum temperature, uh, we had 46, 47, 47, and 49 on the cores. So um, basically very nice uh, drop from the stock cooler that we were looking at. Uh, it is a big cooler as you can see from the case here. It will take up quite a bit of space so make sure you accommodate for that. Have a uh, at least a large mid tower case if not a full tower case if you're planning on installing it. Uh, it's a nice looking cooler and it performs very well so I'm uh, very pleased to have a chance to play around with this one, do some benchmarking with it. So I want to thank uh, Thermalright for providing this for our showcase, and I want to thank you for watching.